got lots of these. And I, you know, a lot of uh, artists or creators keep, keep their rejection letters and then glow when, when they, they break out. But for me, I knew that there were two big problems. So one is that newspapers were you know, diminishing in size. The opportunities were diminishing. And then also, uh, my drawings just weren't good enough. You know, if you compared my drawings to professional drawings, I could see that I didn't have what it took. And moreover, I didn't have the ability to get there. I couldn't control a pen like a uh, professional cartoonist could. And I just knew I could never develop a, a line uh, like the, the pros did. And so I said, what do I do? I, I think I can write pretty well. Um, but I, I just can't draw very well. And I had this idea. I was in, it was in 1998. And I was living in Cashville, as I live in, in Natick. And I said, what if I start drawing like a kid? What if I say, OK, I can't draw like an adult, so why don't I start drawing like a kid? So I said, where do I sort of max out in terms of my talents? And I said, at about seventh grade. Uh, <laughs> so that's where the idea for Greg Heffley came from. Uh, Diary of a Wimpy Kid was, was born in that moment when I could sort of embrace uh, my, my limitations, actually. The types of stories I was writing down are things that happened to me in real life. Uh, a lot of the stories in Diary of a Wimpy Kid happened to me in some shape or form or happened to people in my family friends of mine. Uh, so there's a lot of truth in the books, even if it's not exactly true. Uh, but this story is pretty much spot on. I was actually a, uh, you know, sometimes I could be a wimpy kid. I was kind of an average kid, but sometimes I could really pour it on. And what I would do, I was on the swim team, and so my coach, the first thing I'd do in the morning is ask if I could go use the bathroom. So I'd go and, and hide out in the locker room. Right? So this is that's <laughs> so that's me circa like 1977, right? In a, in a speedo. Do kids have to wear speedos anymore? I hope not. <laughs> this was before they started wearing them. Well, my dad introduced me to comics, and it was him who, you know, got the Washington Post and read the comics himself. So when I was writing that as a kid, I thought that was writing for a grown And so this was the first cover I came up with for Diary of the Kid. Sort of like an adult day planner, which even those are obsolete. Yeah. Sure. Um, but I showed it to a, a publisher. I went to New York Comic Con, uh, I guess about seven years ago. Um, I'm not sure if that math lines up. In, uh, so I walked around with this submission packet in my hand after I'd written a 1,300-page first draft. And I walked around, and I found this guy who had published another webcomic called Mom's Cancer, so something very different altogether. And I showed him this, like, I think it was a 12-page submission packet. He looked at it, and he said, this is exactly what we're looking for. So that was very exciting. And he also saw this as something for grown-ups. Uh, so then my publisher, you know, took it in-house and thought about it and thought about it for months and months. And, and finally, I got the call. Um, and they said, well, there's good news and bad news. Uh, the good news is we want to publish your book. In fact, we want to make it into a series. And I was like, that's great. You know, that's weird. I wanted it to be one big fat book. And they said, no, we want to chop it up into a series. And they said, the, and the bad news is we, we want to make it a children's book.